And then the recent press response, which I mentioned earlier, declaring that the gap has closed between boys and girls following the NSF results. And um, that, uh, again, is based on the idea that since the averages now have come out to be the same in No Child Left Behind data, that this should explain to us all that, in fact, women and men are equally good. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite true if you look far out in terms of who's continuing to do science and who's getting PhDs in science and math and who's getting jobs in these fields. Um, so it's not really true. Um, and I want to say a few more reasons about why, um, why this data, sorry, what this data actually says and what it doesn't say. So um, an interesting thing is that they found if they looked at the 99th percentile, so those are the kids who are really doing great, differences between girls and boys. In, in white kids, boys did better. And among Asians, girls did better. And unfortunately, there wasn't enough data to make comparisons for the other groups. So what they, what they also found is that, uh, so, so this kind of thing where you see different races doing very well, of course, these are demographic kind of information. They don't have every, every piece of information that you might want to know about these kids. But it does suggest that gender plays less of a role than socialization. That's also confirmed by international tests. Um, in which there are some countries like Iceland in particular where girls uh, far outperform boys. Um, and then this was the very interesting thing, and I, I wanted to bring this up because I do think it's related to this issue of variation versus averages. So the NSF authors tried to code the questions on the test by the level of difficulty at four different levels. The level one was like recall mathematical facts. Level two would be skill or concept. Um, the ability to carry out a mathematical process. Level three would be strategic thinking, which is something that um, is probably um, most important in advanced mathematical classes um, that I try to really uh, get to in, in the courses that I teach at any level and even with my young children. And uh, like, how would you solve a problem? How would you try to solve a problem? Um, and, and then level four is extended thinking, which is actually what you need to do to, for example, get a PhD in mathematics, you know, to really put together a project. And of course, you would think that you couldn't have level four problems on a, on a standardized test. But in fact, they found so few questions even of level three, they couldn't evaluate the differences between girls and boys even. And there were that few questions. So what's happening, and uh, again, I wanted to bring this, connect this now to the issue that I mentioned before about um, is there actually any science in the politics? Um, when it comes to something like No Child Left Behind, the desire to measure a scientific, scientifically the outcome has meant that the tests become only in about level of one and two questions. So in fact, we know virtually nothing about how our kids are doing um, in the most important uh, thinking skills that will turn them into scientists. So what I would say is that the media are mistaking the data for something more difficult to measure. You can only conclude what the data can accurately measure. So what can we tell about um, behavior far from the mean on these tests? What does it take to do advanced mathematics? These are questions that aren't asked and in fact are not in the data. There is no way you can comb the data the right way and get it, OK? So that's a sort of like, you know, a lot of people have a lot of faith in data. If we only got the right interpretation, we would get it. No, it's actually not there. Um, and I think that's really important. So um, again, let me just tell you what, what positive things happened from stats getting involved in this question, especially earlier on. I was actually on CNN International, which was really cool, with my sister, who was also a PhD in biostatistics, um, talking about um, how women actually can do uh, math and science and how difficult it is to pre predict who's going to be the next Einstein. Um, we also talked about how SATs are not necessarily going to be predictive of success in the highest levels. Um, maybe a, a good performance or a decent performance is important, but uh, so a really poor performance might indicate um, not being able to do it intellectually, but what is required to perform at the highest levels is so much more than what is measured on that test. Um, talked about the difficulty of extracting information far from the mean. Talked about what math education experts say on the issue, which um, 
by the way, math education experts would never deny that there's a difference in performance between boys and girls. But what they would deny is that that has anything to do with inherent, inherent differences. And again, I think very few people are willing to say there are no differences. What they're willing to say is that any differences are hugely eclipsed eclipsed, excuse me, eclipsed by social factors and other reasons why it is that girls don't choose to do science. Um, we talked about the question of academic freedom from an academic viewpoint. I think this is really important. Um, the press had this whole thing, academic freedom is dead. Um, and I think any academic would say, you have to be able to support your view in a sound academic way. You can't just, you know, have, I have some random idea based on a really superficial concept when there's um, scores of, there's, there's a huge amount of research in a field. And that's what Summers really did, which is why what he said um, stunk of sexism and not of a difference of opinion. Um, and I think that we gave the discussion a personal um, side to people's, and, and, and uh, we made a difference in people's lives, I think.